Good afternoon, Rabotai. Tonight is the lighting of the first uh, candle of the Hanukkah. So, therefore, we wanted to tell the uh, Tzibur, the community, when is it the proper time to light. According to the Gemara and the Shulchan Ruch, a person should light at Sita Kochavim. What does that mean, Sita Kochavim? It's a time when the stars come out. It doesn't actually mean the stars come out for us to see. It's a matter of uh, expertise, that a person has to know how to see the stars coming out, as it says in Tosfot and Pani Yoshua. A person has to be expert to do that. So therefore, since we don't, are with our naked eyes, we don't know how to see when the stars come out, especially it has to be medium stars, and not small and not large. So we don't know how to tell the difference between medium and small and large. So therefore we rely on the Shita of the Goyim, Goyim the opinion of the Goyim. The Goyim, the Goyim say that the stars come out 13 and a half minutes after the sun goes down, after Shkiat Hama. So therefore, since the, star, uh, the sun goes down at this time in the New York area, let's say about 4.30, so therefore about quarter to five would be the best time to light Hanukkah candles in the New York area. Every place, according to its respective uh, horizon, that the sun goes down different times over there. The whole world is different, as we know. Nevertheless, the person should wait another 15 minutes after that, after the sun goes down, 13 and a half minutes, whatever it is. Even 10 minutes would be enough in, in, in the winter because the... the the hours are shorter, the day, hours of the day are shorter. So even 10, 11 minutes will be enough. Nevertheless, whatever it is, about quarter to five is the best time to light. And we shouldn't have to wait, uh, I want to inform everybody that we shouldn't have to wait 40 minutes or 45 minutes after the sun goes down, like the custom is, the local custom regarding Shabbat, that they wait 40 minutes or 45 minutes to do, to do labors after Shabbat. What's the reason why? Because that custom has to do with, uh, first of all, visual sighting of, of the stars, which we don't really know how to do nowadays and it could also be because we have lights in the uh, at night outside outdoors it's hard to see the stars and so the person shouldn't really rely on what he sees visually with his eyes but rather he should rely on the two main opinions that there are regarding the the coming of night the, the stars coming out we have the Geonim who says 13 and a half minutes after the sun goes down as we said and then we have the Rabbin Tam who says it's 72 minutes so we don't do like Rabbi Tam when it comes to the, uh, the candles of Hanukkah. The reason is because uh, candles of Hanukkah are the Rabbanan, they're only rabbinical. So therefore we don't have to be stringent to do wait until the time of Rabbi Tam. And uh, also we don't have to be stringent to wait until the time of 40-45 minutes as we said, like they do after Shabbat. The reason is because over there, as we said, it's visual. They're relying on visual, um, seeing, visually seeing the stars, which we don't have to wait for that. Because we, we don't know how to see them, we don't know how, we're not expert in how to, how to watch the stars. So therefore, there's no reason to do that. Also, they, there's another issue is that when it comes to Shabbat, they do something which is called Tosefet Shabbat. What does that mean? That a person should add to the time of Shabbat a little bit a little bit more and it takes the time to go out. So therefore, the Tosefet Shabbat is already calculated in that number, 40, 45 minutes. Uh, the additional time that we add to Shabbat because of the fact that it's the Oraita and there's a mitzvah to do Tosefet Shabbat to add to Shabbat a little bit more time when, as it comes in and also when it goes out. So when it comes to Hanukkah, we don't have such a thing like this. We don't have such a concept like this of adding time to the day or adding time to the night, whatever it is, all these things. So therefore, what we do is, since it's a rabbinical mitzvah, the, the, the um, candles of Hanukkah, the best thing to do, as we said, is to 13 and a half minutes, 15 minutes, or even 10 minutes after the sun goes down, it's the proper time to light, and there's no reason to wait any longer time, Rabbi Tai. There's no chuma, there's no stringency to wait longer until it gets pitch dark or anything like that. When it comes to the... Uh, the, the uh, the candles of Hanukkah, there's no reason to wait. So we have, as the Gemara says, we have a, a half hour after that, which is the proper time to do. What does that mean? That, as we said, the time starts at quarter to five and continues about till 5.15 because the whole thing at the regal, the time that people are wandering in the shuk, going around and coming home, uh, is at, at least that in those days, that's the way it was. Today, we don't have such a concept like that. People are coming home much later and they're also wandering around in the shuk in the outside in the, in the market in the street they're more wandering around much longer the city never sleeps as they say so therefore all night is that they're wandering around sometimes so therefore Abutai, nevertheless since the sages made a decree that we should light at that time even though the concept doesn't exist today so much nevertheless we should light at that time if it's possible what does that mean that a person is home anyway he's not working at that time he's not at work he doesn't have a job to do he's got, he doesn't he's not on business he's not doing something uh, crucial something uh, something which has to be uh, done at a certain time. So therefore, if he's at home at that time and he can get home, he should light at the right, at the proper time, as we said. From a quarter to five to 5.15, this is the best time to do. Another thing which is interesting in the note is that uh, the Sfaradim, we Sfaradim, 
our custom is that we do our vit right after the sun goes down, right after, right after Shkiat Chama, when it comes to Chanukah time. What's the reason why? Because we want to light on time, as we said. So therefore we do our vit right after the sun goes down, 4.30, 4.31, whatever it is, and the person should be done by, by, by a quarter to five, and there you can run home right away and light at the right time. This would be the best thing to do. So therefore, what we do is, our custom is that we say our vit. The reason is because... Um, most of the poskim, most of the authorities, they say that arvit should be done before the lighting of the candles. Why is that? Tadir, no tadir, tadir kodem. Since since arvit is a is a mitzvah which is done all the time, every day, so therefore it supersedes the mitzvah of um, Hanukkah, uh, even uh, which is not every day, just once a year, eight, eight days out of the year. And even though it's pirsune misena, it's pirsune nisa. What does that mean? That we're publicizing the miracle, and the Magen Abraham says that the, the um, the candles should be lit before praying Arvit. But the truth is that all the poskim, the Shev Yaakov, and many, many other poskim, Achronim, don't agree with the Magen Abraham. They say that the, the Arvit should be first. So therefore, the best thing to do is to say Arvit beforehand, as we said, right after Shkia. That also means that we have to skip over the Divrei Torah. What does that mean? If, even if we say, in the Bet Knesset, we say in the synagogue, Divrei Torah, words of Torah, between Mincha and Arvit, to give the people a chance to learn some Torah, the, the Baal Batim, who don't have a chance to learn Torah all day, so we give them a zechut to learn Torah. Nevertheless, now, because of Hanukkah, what we do is we skip over the Torah, we see our read right away, and uh, therefore we get home on time to light during this time, this half-hour time span, as we just mentioned about time. So this is the best thing to do. But a person who's not able to do this because he's at work or he's doing something, he's got an important meeting to go to, go to or even if there's some kind of... Uh, a lecture and Torah that they do at this time and they can't really move it to a different time because they know people won't come back once they go home they won't come back so they are able in cases like this one is able to do the Hanukkah kind of light, lighting the candles even after this half hour span he can do it all night whenever he gets a chance to do it whenever he can go home after he finishes his business or his meeting or whatever it is or his uh, lecture they have a lecture that they do uh, at, at this day at the, uh, and at this night so whatever it is, the rabbi they can finish it and, and do it day later on. Why is that? Since we don't have the concept of regel, people are people are walking around all night uh, nowadays, uh, especially later on, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, they're walking around, and also because uh, people are um, uh, actually not getting home so early from work uh, at that, that time. That's not the time people get home from work. So therefore, uh, we don't have such a concept of regel today. That's what's brought down in many of the rishonim, uh, the, the rashba and the meiri. They already mentioned, right, that uh, in the times of the Talmud, that they had that regal, that half-hour period, that people were walking around. So they had that's the way they made it then. But nowadays, it doesn't really apply to us. Also, there's another reason why, because we light indoors, as those Rishonim mentioned, those authorities mentioned, that nowadays, the mitzvah is to light indoors more than outdoors. So therefore, since we're lighting indoors, we're not really, we don't really care so much about what's going on outside, people walking around or not. So therefore, as long as the, the family is going to see the lighting, so therefore we should light all night, uh, whenever a person gets a chance, even if he got home late. Uh, there's also another question, which is that um, if a person gets home, let's say, and his family is already sleeping, so the question is, should he wake them up or not wake them up? And even uh, even if he does wake them up, uh, let's say they, they, they don't get up or he can't wake them up, he can't wake them up for some reason. So the question is, can he make a blessing or if he does it by himself? without any of the family members, can you make the blessing? There are some post who say that you shouldn't make a blessing like that. Why is that? Because there's no Pursum Enisa. The miracle is not being publicized, only by himself. But the truth is that the Halakha is not like that. The Halakha is like the post who say that a person can make the blessing even though the people are sleeping and nobody's going to listen to the bracha except himself. That's also Pursum Enisa. He's also publicizing it by himself. So therefore the Halakha is, if a person gets home late, you should try to wake up the, the family members, but let's say you know they don't want to wake up, they're tired, whatever it is, Nevertheless, he should uh, make the blessing anyway, no matter what time it is. Uh, uh, how far does it go, the mitzvah of lighting candles of Hanukkah? Until Amud HaShachar, right? What does that mean? Until dawn. So to the, to nowadays, dawn is about, uh, since the uh, sunrise is very, very late right now, it's about 7, uh, 7.15 or so. Therefore, the dawn, because the hours are shorter as well, even though it's 72 minutes, the, the difference between dawn and Nitzachama, nevertheless, now dawn is much closer to Nitzachama because the hours are shorter. Shaud Zmaniot. So therefore, the dawn, really, according to the Shulchan Ruch, is about 6.15, 6.20. This is the dawn, according to the Shulchan Ruch. Even though some have a custom to do 90 minutes, uh, as it was in Europe, but we, as far as we don't do 90 minutes. We do 72 minutes. And therefore, since it's Shaud Zmaniot, it gets even shorter, and it becomes like an hour. 
So therefore, about 6.15, 6.20, this will be the last time that a person could light Hanukkah candles, and even to make a blessing, because until the time, that time it's pitch dark, and there is no dawn until that time, at this time of year anyway. That's, that's the way it is. The sun rises very, very late. It's about 7.15, 7.20, so therefore a person can light until 6.15. He can still light the Hanukkah candles in the morning, because it's still pitch dark and there's no dawn. So this will be the last time. But, of course, as it says in the Mishonim, it says in the Salacha, that a person shouldn't wait the Chathila, preferably in that, at such a late time like that, only if he wasn't able to do it for some reason. He was anus. He was forced to do it very, very late. But if a person who has the time to do it earlier, should do it earlier, right? Should never delay any mitzvah, right? Don't make the mitzvah in the last minute. Don't ever do such a thing like that. When you have a chance to do it, do it right away. As we said, Rabotai, the best time to do it is at quarter to five and five until 5.15 in our area, in the Newark area. If you go to California, if you go to Israel, there's different times over there. Check your local right, schedule over there. Check your local luach, your, your local chart, and you'll see when it is. But the point is that, as we said, that a person doesn't have to wait longer than that, about 15 minutes once the sun goes down, because since Hanukkah is rabbinical, number one, and also the custom is to do like the Geonim. The Geonim says it's 13 and a half minutes after Shkia, and therefore, Rabbi Tai, nobody should wait until 40 minutes or 72 minutes, Rabbi Tam. Don't get into these things. This is not uh, relevant in, in this discussion. There are discussions where these things are relevant, but in this discussion, it's not so. So therefore, Rabbi Tai, a person should try to light on time. As we said, Baruch Adonai Amen Amen. Happy holiday and all the blessings to you and your families. Amen Amen.